Good evening, good afternoon, and good night, depending on where you're watching this from. I'm Luke with Tandem Cross. Welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to be revisiting the Browning Buckmark to talk about the Victory Trigger. The Victory Trigger is widely popular amongst pistols uh, and rifles, specifically in rimfire, but also some centerfire platforms as well. But I really just wanna dive into the Buckmark today. We'll talk about it, and I'll show you guys how to install it at the end of the video. I'm gonna hand it off to Tyler for that and adjust it to your liking. So to start, if you're not familiar with the Victory Trigger family, they're flat face triggers with texture on them. They're skeletonized, super lightweight, and they have some adjustability. Now the texturing on the trigger is really, really subtle, but it allows you to have complete control whether you have the sweaty hands or uh, specifically for me, when I wear gloves during the winter, this is really helpful. And there's an over travel adjustment screw on the bottom here, which you can dial in to uh, prevent over travel and that spongy feeling that you probably would recognize in factory triggers. And in addition, because it is a flat face trigger and it's wider than the factory trigger, you're gonna be able to pull it from a lower perspective, giving you a lighter perceived pull weight. And it's also worth mentioning that you can actually reduce your trigger pull weight by half a pound or even more with our drop-in um, gearbox sear spring upgrade. It's a lot safer than a lot of the DIY options out there, so that's an option as well. The Browning Buckmark is already a really good rimfire pistol, but it goes from good to great with the Victory Trigger. Now let's head into the shop. I'm gonna have Tyler show you guys how to install it. It's very easy and adjust it to your liking. All right, welcome to the installation portion of the program. We'll be putting in this victory trigger to this Browning Buckmark. So before you begin, let's just double check. There's no magazine. Check the chamber. Chamber is in fact empty. So we are clear and safe. Make sure that you have everything in front of you at your workspace to begin the task. First, we need the trigger itself. And then we will need some medium strength thread locker. A pick will be very useful here, as uh, will potentially be a set of fine pliers. And then just a general set of punches or Allen keys to help push things along will be uh, beneficial, as well as the tool required to take the grips off. This set of grips uses a hex head. Um, sometimes they can be a flat head, so grab the appropriate tool for your set of grips. To begin this installation, we'll go ahead and remove the grips. This one does take a hex head fastener, so I grab the appropriate hex key. Starting on the left side, we'll take off the grip panel, set it and the screw off here, and we'll go ahead and remove the bolt stop lever. All right, we're looking good on this side. Now we can Flip the pistol over to the other side. Perform the same operation. Right side grip panel off. Now here we can take our pick. We'll locate this V-shaped flat spring. Put our finger over the one end, hook the tool under and just pluck it out. This will be going back in. We just wanna make sure it's set aside for good safekeeping. And we will go ahead and do the same with the magazine release flat spring. Come up from the underside and you can push up on the magazine release. Remove that as well. Now with our pick, we'll go in and take the disconnect bar, swing it just like that. So now we popped it up and over this, this pin and away that can go. All right, so at this point, we have two pins visible. One is the trigger pivot pin, and then this top pin here is what links the trigger to the trigger disconnect bar. To remove these two, it is possible to just push that lower pin out with an Allen key or a punch or similar. And for this top pin, sometimes you can grip it with these fine pliers and slide it up and out of the trigger. Unfortunately, these two pins are a little bit tight, so the odds are not uh, exactly in my favor. We'll have to go ahead and uh, drive these out with a punch and hammer. So to do so, I'll flip it around and manipulate the trigger. You might need to pull it back ever so slightly until you can get that top hole right there to line up with the top hole in the trigger from which to drive out that top Pivot pin. 
There we go, pivot pin out. This will not be going back into the firearm itself once this is complete. We'll go ahead and do the same with the bottom pin. And give this grip a little bit of lift. And the trigger pivot pin is out. This will be going back into the pistol. All right, so now that we have drifted out those two pins, to remove the trigger, go ahead and sort of swing it forward and out of the pistol. Set that aside. That is obviously not going back into the pistol. At this point, we can prepare the new trigger for installation. So let's take a moment to go over what is included with your victory trigger. First, we have the trigger shoe itself. Next, we have the trigger over travel stop screw. We'll show how to adjust that at the very end, as well as this silver pin, which replaces that top trigger link pin. We'll show you how that goes in in just a moment. To get everything prepped and ready for install, go ahead and apply a small amount of medium strength thread locker over the thread length of that over travel stop screw. And then we will install it into the trigger now while we have nice, easy access. And we can thread it until the top face, the side with the drive head is approximately flush with the front face of the trigger itself. That way uh, we have most of the adjustment done before it even goes in. So to put the trigger into the pistol, we'll go ahead and operate in reverse direction. So bring the trigger up line up the top head with the slot in the frame and swing it up into position. If it's not going in, you might need to bring the over travel stop screw forward a little bit like I do here. So I brought it back two turns and just to clear the edge of the trigger guard, that's all that we needed. Now we'll go ahead and install the trigger pivot pin, the one at the bottom. and just nice, push it in. The fit of this pin is determined by the tolerancing between the pin and the frame itself. So sometimes these are a little bit snug and they need to be pushed in um, with a hammer. Sometimes they will be a little bit loose and fall through. If yours is a little bit of a looser fit, you might wish to grab a small piece of tape and then place it over either both sides or one side of that trigger pivot pin hole, just so while you're performing the rest of the assembly here, that pin is staying in place. Now we'll flip the pistol over to install this silver link pin, which will slot into the top of the trigger. The wider donut in the middle of that pin will hold uh, up against the side of the trigger, so you don't need to worry about maneuvering that factory taper pin uh, back and forth for the you know, just the right fit. Now the trigger's installed, we can go ahead and put all the other internals back into the frame, starting with the trigger disconnect bar, which you'll see has sort of a lobe to it, a circular portion. That will be closest towards the slide of the pistol, like so. So, slips over the dowel pin here, goes up into the underside of the slide, like so. Pulling this bar as far back as we can, let's go ahead and put this little v shape return spring in, which we will do by first lining up the flat against the tab on the bottom of the disconnect bar, and then pushing the other end into that relief on the side of the frame. So you have just like that. Now we're gonna put the magazine release back in, starting with the actual magazine release stem, followed by the flat spring. You'll see it's sort of T-shaped. There's these protrusions off to either side. Those slot into the corresponding reliefs on the frame as well. And now we have installed everything that's on the right side of the frame. So let's go ahead and for nice, easy keeping, we will put the right side grip panel back on. If you have 
a frame with the wraparound style of grips, you can go ahead and just screw down the right side and then have the other side flipped open like you're you know, sort of reading a book. Now that that has been negotiated, back over to the other side. The only part that needs to go back in here is the slide stop slide release. You'll see a circular protrusion that lines up with the circular hole in the frame. And then there's this small wire spring with a leg bent up. That'll slot into the hole here on the slide stop slide release. So find the end of the spring and then press the little pivot protrusion in. And now if I lay my finger over the top of this, I have a little bit of gentle spring back so everything is proper there. Now it is grip panel time on the left side as well. All right, so there we go with the general installation. Now what we'd like to do is adjust the over travel. Since the buck marks are sensitive to dry fire damage, where uh, dropping the hammer uh, on an empty chamber without a snap cap uh, can, can damage the face of the firing pin as well as the face of the chamber. Uh, you can either have a magazine with snap caps in there just to protect the chamber, or you can go ahead and remove this rear sight rib and take the bolt out, which is exactly what we will be doing right now for demonstration purposes. All right, there we go. So we've pulled the bolt slide assembly off. So now we can see the internals, which will give us a good view of uh, what's going on here. And we'll be adjusting the over travel on this trigger. The pre-travel is already pre-adjusted by that tongue that extends forward on our victory trigger. So to do this, I'll go ahead and thread this screw in a good bit, probably about halfway through the trigger shoe itself. That will be far enough that pulling the trigger will arrest the trigger's movement too soon and uh, the hammer will not drop. And then from that point, we can start walking this screw back this way until proper function is restored so that we can be sure that we are you know, maximizing the usefulness of that over travel stop screw. All right, so I've threaded this out quite far here. Let's see if this is too far. So just to check, safety is on fire. Uh, we don't have a magazine disconnect present in this pistol, but if yours does still have that component, you can insert an empty magazine. I will place my thumb over the hammer just in case, and then I will pull the trigger. All right, so you can see here, the trigger is being pulled and the trigger stops, no hammer drop. So we have taken out too much of the over travel and we will begin to dial this back by about a half turn or so and continue checking until the hammer is indeed able to fall. All right, so it is beginning to fall here. It just needed that little one turn back, um, but it's just on the edge of reliability. So I'll take it back another half turn or so, just so that we know, you know, hot day, cold day, any of those, you know, uncontrollable factors, it's still gonna run. And there we have it. So now that we've adjusted the over travel to be as clean as possible, the shortest overall trigger throw while maintaining reliability, we can go ahead and let that Loctite cure for about 24 hours. I will go ahead and reassemble the pistol so we can give you a final look at how it all came together. All right, so there we have it. The trigger is installed and I gotta say, it's looking pretty good on this pistol. And as we just showed, the travel is greatly reduced over the original and then you will have a slight felt trigger pull weight reduction over the factory curved trigger uh, on account of that longer flat surface, giving you better leverage to pull down at the bottom. There we have it. Thank you so much for watching the installation portion.
Thank you guys for watching our video on the Browning Buckmark and specifically the victory trigger for the Browning Buckmark. Uh, please like and subscribe, it helps a lot. The uh, space here on YouTube is pretty crazy for us 2A folks. So we appreciate any support you guys have to offer. If you have any questions or concerns, comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video on whatever social media platform you use. I'm Luke with Tandem Cross, and we're here to make your good guns great. Keep up with us on social media for daily updates. I'll see you next time.